I knew that something was wrong. I wasn't able to work, I wasn't creating anything. And a lot of these obsessions I was having were sexually themed. You don't want to tell anybody this stuff. You have no choice but to suffer in secret. I'm Martin, I'm 32, and I've got OCD. All through uni, I didn't have any troubles. I went through film school, learning how to tell stories and making people laugh. I had the best friends. I just fell in love for the first time. It was great. Obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD is where you have uh, intense uh, obsessions about something uh, and then you try to make those thoughts go away or try to feel better by doing compulsions. You can get obsessed with anything. For me, it was sexual stuff. It was questions about who I am, usually like negative questions. <laughs> what if I am uh, dangerous? Uh, what if I've been born uh, with some, you know, something wrong with my brain that makes me uh, a pervert or, or, for lack of a better word, evil? At the time, I didn't see it as a health problem. I had this weight that I was dragging around everywhere and that no one else knew and that I could never tell anybody. You read the description of OCD and you, th and you think, well, I'm not doing any compulsions. But trying to unthink a thought, negate a thought, trying to solve a thought, what we call rumination, those are all compulsions. So sexuality, which should be positive, I had attached fear to. I totally abandoned sex. I didn't masturbate for, for six years. There was a time I couldn't even touch my penis to go to the toilet. Even something that unsexual, I couldn't do. Years later, my OCD pivoted into contamination concerns and my hands were bleeding because I was scrubbing them so much. The washing of the hands compulsion is exactly the same as the rumination compulsion. Uh, it's just, it's all happening invisibly and so you don't think it's there. It was about eight years before I managed to say any of this out loud. Even being diagnosed as OCD doesn't make the doubt go away. Medication gives you some sort of support so that you can then do the work. It's taken many years of therapy and like changing my relationship to my thoughts to get to the point where I don't take my thoughts as seriously as I did. Thoughts are not threats, feelings are not facts. I discovered as time went on that the more you talk about it, the less power it has. The reactions from people in my life, friends, family, my bosses, has been 100% positive and not at all what I feared. Talking about OCD and creating things about OCD has become like an obsession for me in a good way this time. That's become a, a new a great purpose of my life, at least at this time of my life, is to use my passion for, for storytelling to try to tell this very untold story. People can live in that black hole period for, for decades before finally getting the diagnosis. And I want to save other people from going through that if, if, if they can. Now that I'm on the upside of recovery, I feel like I'm making up for lost time. <laughs> I'm able to <laughs> go to my parents' house for dinner. I'm able to do something as simple as go to the loo. I'm able to, oh my God, go on a date, which is ridiculous. A big part of therapy and recovery is trusting myself enough to love again. And it's a constant daily uh, battle, uh, but I'm working on it. If you can relate to anything I've said, or if you recognize any of yourself in what I've been talking about, 
please give a click to the link that you'll find in the comments or give a Google to OCD. There are plenty of resources out there if you just look. Thanks very much. Take care.